WDJS Productions offers biblical teachings of God's Word for you. Our prayer is that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. It is with great joy that we are here today to share with you God's faithfulness to the obedient as we in the body of Christ give tithe, offering, and alms. I'm Cindy and with me is Rodney Hello. and Glenda. Hello. We will first explain the importance of tithe according to the Word of God and what it means. Tithe means one-tenth, which is 10%. Out of one dollar you give 10 cents tithe, and out of ten dollars you would give one dollar tithe. Mm -hmm. So however much money you make as your gross income, you are to give one-tenth to your storehouse. Your storehouse is your congregational leadership who spiritually feeds you the Word of God as a message from heaven. This 10% cannot be designated for anything other than what the Bible declares in obedience to God. Malachi 3 verse 8 and 9 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. We see in these scriptures that if we don't give our tithe and offering, or maybe spend it on something else, we are robbing God and are no longer under a blessing. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. The storehouse is where one is being spiritually fed. And as one is being obedient to tithe, his spiritual needs will be met and his physical needs too. Also, Malachi 3.11 says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you and the field, says the Lord of hosts. In these verses, we see God commanding us to try Him in this, our 10% tithe, which we cheerfully give. He will pour out such a blessing on us that we will not be able to contain it. God will rebuke the devourer, and He will stop that curse of our money being devoured, and will surely bless our obedience to Him. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. As we trust God with our tithe, offering, and alms, and remember, cheerfully give all that we are moved by the Holy Spirit to give, we shall be filled with plenty, and will burst with the overabundance of every spiritual and physical blessing possible in our life. In Leviticus 27 verse 30 it says that tithe is holy unto the Lord. And also in Nehemiah 13 verse 10 through 12 declares when people quit supporting the ministries, the church fell apart. Tithe is also in the New Testament in Jesus' words. Matthew 23 verse 23 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of men and anise and common, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Jesus said, We are not to leave these undone, including tithes. Another scripture in the New Testament is 1 Timothy 5, verses 17 and 18. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Mm -hmm. In Greek, the word honor means a value, that is, money paid. The leadership who governs and feeds the church is to be given the double honor for their office, which is what God commands the congregation to give to its leaders. Next, let's talk about offering. Offering is not limited by a percentage. It is only limited by one's faith and trust in God. 
Offering is given for maintenance of the church or building and furnishings. Exodus 35 21 says, And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. Let's read Exodus 36 verses 3 to 7. And we will see the blessing of obedience to God's word. And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So they continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. And then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. Glenda, will you please read verses 6 and 7. Sure. So Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done, indeed too much. In the New Testament, we read in Mark 12, verses 41 through 44, And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Most people give out of their abundance just to make themselves feel good. That's right. Mm -hmm. Finally, we will explain alms. Alms are for distribution to the need of the saints and the poor. Any giving is an act of the will of the believer who thankfully acknowledges that God supplies all their need. Alms are proof of one's compassionate, tender, and merciful heart. Matthew 6, 1-4 says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father, which see it in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. Christians are not to call attention to their almsgiving. Amen. Giving alms is to please God and not to gain praise from others. Proverbs 28, 27 says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. As we faithfully, through our obedience, give our tithe, offering, and alms, God is glorified. The majority of church leaders have abandoned diligent teaching of the basic biblical principle of tithe, offering, and alms as written in both the Old and New Testament. Because the biblical order is not exercised, churches are constantly seeking funds on flashy television and radio programming, and with fundraisers, big sales, car washes, and rummage sales, and that is probably enough yeah. said. To encourage people to give, churches joined with the government, which offered the churches non-profit status to provide tax exemption for any contribution. Churches keep records of each individual's donations to the church. Hmm. They send out annual receipts for contributions and the individual reports his amount of charitable giving to the government. The Bible declares that one loses his reward from God when publicly displaying one's giving and furthermore commands in Matthew 6, 3 as we read earlier. Mm -hmm. 
Let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. To worsen the matter, churches and charities hang plaques on walls, and churches sell pews to give honor to the largest donors or the most faithful attendees. Ministries as well as sports stadiums, buildings, and hospitals are also named for donors to give them notoriety. How sad it is when people only give if there is some reward for themselves, either through honor, recognition, or a tax break. Giving the full 10% of your tithe, offering and giving alms as you're led by the Holy Spirit is a great blessing Amen. and it is very exciting. I encourage everybody listening to obey God's word and you will see His word is truth and experience His blessings upon your life. God bless you and thank you for allowing us to share with you today. For more teachings, please visit WDJS Productions Thank you for watching, and now, a message from the Nine. There is a time in the life of all human beings when we will determine in our hearts what is truth. Hutterites by the Nine is a true story, a message of nine courageous people who escaped the Hutterite system in which they were born and raised. By choosing life outside their colonies, it cost them their family ties and the places they once called home. They were confronted with unimaginable obstacles, which they successfully overcame. The book, Hutterites by the Nine. Since We Told the Truth invites the reader to continue with the Nine as they advance their passionate vision. The Nine are sharing the truths they have come to know and continue to establish godly principles in this nation to inspire vision, determination and hope. Since We Told the Truth is a cogent invitation to all who have been numb by complacency to a call of action for themselves, their family and their nation. Buy the books, Hutterites and Since We Told the Truth by the Nine online or at Barnes & Noble bookstores everywhere. May the Father of glory give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him and make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Thank you for watching. For more teachings, visit WDJSProductions.com.